morning. Welcome to worship on this nice, crisp, cold day, but at least it's not snowing, right? Oh, I think we're moving the church to Florida next week. It's just too cold here. I'm so glad we can come together today to sing the hymns that inspire us, to join in communion, to hear the word of God preached, and to join in fellowship with one another. This is a wonderful day that God has made for us, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's take a moment to start our worship with a, a time to prepare our hearts and minds. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in singing our gathering hymn, number 526. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Amen. Gathered into God's presence, let us confess our sin. We'll take a moment for silent confession. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Now hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that all of your sins are forgiven and you are released. 
The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's join in singing our hymn of praise, Arise, Your Light Has Come. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to those around you and welcome them to worship with a sign of Christ's peace, a high five, a handshake, a hug, whatever it may be. kind of sounded like you were having some fun. 
Thank you. I'd like to invite the kids to come forward for children's time. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay, good morning. So I'm wondering if you've had a chance to make one of these guys. Nope, not yet? Oh, well, I was hoping that you could help me figure out how do you make, make one of those. What do they call those things? Snowmen. How do you make a snowman? Did you notice that there's plenty of snow out there these days? Yeah. So what does it take to make a snowman? Snow. It takes snow. So we got a pile of snow there. Okay, what else do we need? Does it... Car oh, carrots. Yeah, of course. And what? Sticks. Okay, but how do you get a snowman? I mean, those are the, the appendages or add-ons. Yeah. You roll three balls. You roll three balls. Show me how that works. Do you start, do you just say, make a ball and the ball appears, or what do you have to do? Okay, so you make a tiny ball, and then what? So if I go out right now at minus 15 or whatever it is, can I roll a snowball right now? I can. Oh, gosh, I thought it needed to be a little warmer than this. Have you noticed when snowballs can be made? It's got to be like right at melting temperature. And then we can go with what you're talking about. You, you throw it in the snow and you roll it. What happens? Um, it, it gets to be a big ball. Does it grow? Does it get bigger? Yeah. So how big can it get? As, as, as big as you want. Okay. Is it so big you can't lift it anymore? Yeah. Oh, so then that becomes the base of the snowman, right? So then what do you do with number two, the second ball? Yeah. You roll a medium ball. Okay. And you start with that same thing and you start rolling it. And then what do you do? You just got to guess. Oh, poof. Lift it on top of the first one. And then what happens with the third one? Yeah, yeah. What happens? You start with the same process, but now instead of a huge ball and a medium ball, it's a what? It's a small ball. And so all of a sudden, we get to one of these guys, okay? And that's where those sticks come in, and the carrot comes in. And what do you use for eyes? Coals? Or buttons? Okay, and what about the mouth? Rocks for the mouth? Oh, or for the eyes, okay. I used a piece of bacon on this one. What else could you use for the mouth? Doesn't that seem appropriate? Bacon in the mouth? Yeah, okay. And then sticks for the arms, and then buttons for the... I think those are buttons for the, um, oh, those are rocks for the, for the tummy, okay? So anyway, you know what? When we make something from something else, that's a transformation. That's changing something to, into something different. So instead of just having a pile of all that stupid snow out there, what do we have suddenly? A snowman. Something exciting and fun, right? So today is Transfiguration Sunday. Today is Transformation Sunday. And we're talking about things that change. In the gospel, you're going to hear about Jesus who changes in front of everybody's eyes and becomes the glory of God, the, the brightness of the sunlight. But I'm using the illustration of snow because a pile of snow, and there's lots of it out there, can transform into a snowman, right? So, do you know this song, Frosty the Snowman? Yeah. You guys know that song? I think it's worth singing this morning because we're talking about snowman, don't you? All right, here we go. Frosty the snowman, the happy soul, with a corncob pipe and a carrot nose and two eyes made out of coals. Frosty the snowman is a fairy tale, they say. He was made of snow, but the children know that he came to life one day. There must have been some angel dust in that he found. For when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. Frosty the snowman was a jolly, happy soul. And the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me. Let's say a prayer. 
Thank you, God, for transformations, for things that change, for snowmen that we can play with. Be with us today as we hear your word and recognize the changes you, that you have in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for the help. Good morning. Good morning. The lesson today is from Exodus, the 34th chapter. Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with them. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. So the Holy Gospel for today is written according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And just as they were leaving him, Peter blurted out to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said that not knowing what he was saying. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered into the cloud. And from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of these things that they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met Jesus. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. And Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And while he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Jesus healed the boy. And Jesus gave him back to his father. And all, all were astounded at the goodness, at the greatness of God. And while everyone was amazed at all of he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, let these words sink into your ears. 
the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So I'd like you to help me out here this morning. Can we do this as a little bit of a litany as we start the sermon? God is good. All the time. In the gospel, there was a word. It's the word good. Goodness. That's there. It's a descriptor. It's a pointer to the very essence of God. Good is the word that was used on top of the mountain. And it's also the word that was used down in the valley. It's used in high places and in routines, everyday places. I'm fascinated by this word good. What is good? And how is God good? And what is this goodness of God all about? I think that's a big question because it really gets into the definition of who God is, what God is doing, and where God is leading us. Do you remember the first time that we encountered the identity of God? It's way back in the Old Testament. It's way back at the very beginning of things. It's way back in the first chapter of the first book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, we read that there was a beginning, and that darkness and a void and a chaotic primordial place was existing. And God said, let there be light. And switch. It was like flicking the switch. Suddenly there was light. You could see. Wow, can you see now? What difference does that make in your life to be able to see? God looks, and God sees. And God separates the dark from the light. And God says, wow, this is good. Goodness. Goodness, can that be about the ability to see? Can that be about the ability to recognize things? Is it about the ability to visualize what is going on all around us? The second thing that God does, if you remember from Genesis chapter 1, is that he separates the sky from the earth. He creates the earth and he lifts the sky high. He puts a definition of the difference between earth and sea. And God looks and God sees and guess what? There's that word good again. There is goodness. Could it be that goodness is about the definition about here and there? That the definition of good and there is also about what is here and what is there? Could it be that goodness is about what belongs here and what belongs there? And what doesn't belong here and what doesn't belong there? Goodness. God continues in that first chapter of Genesis with creativity. He calls forth vegetation. He calls forth trees. And he calls forth plants. This is day three. And God says, it looks good. He says, wow, that's mighty fine. No longer is it monochrome. No longer is it just one color. But now we've got the spectrum. We got the colors of the rainbow. You know what happens on the fourth day? God gets into the aerospace business. He throws stars in the sky. He plants the moon in the sky. And he dots the world, or dots the universe with planets. And God says, that's good stuff. Did you notice by this time there's an absence of chaos? There's order? Could it be that the goodness of God is about order? And the lack of chaos? The next thing that comes is living creatures. Water-based animals like fish and turtles. Walking and creeping animals and crawling critters. They fill the land. And God says, hey, I like this. And you remember the word that God uses? It's good. It's good to have creatures with heartbeats. It's good to have creatures that breathe air and consume the oxygen. Do you know how often our hearts beat in a minute? Anybody? I looked this up because I don't know either. It's between 80 and 100 times. Our hearts beat 80 and 100 times. You know what? Every time that heart beats, you know who's saying that's good? It's God. You know how many times we breathe in a minute? This, has got a, this is an easier question, actually. You know? It's between 12 and 25 times. Depends on your sleeping or not, right? Between 12 and 25 minute times a minute. Every time we breathe, you know what God is saying? That's good stuff. That's life. 
We have life within us. That's part of the goodness of God. So, the next day, God creates human beings. Do you know any human beings? Well, come on. Look around. Do you know that when God creates human beings, he puts a part of God's essence in every one of us that we are created in the image of God? If we are created in the image of God, guess what's inside of us? There is goodness inside of us. There is something good that we have been blessed with. God has given us a purpose, and that's to be caretakers. Caretakers of everything that's around us, everything that's in this world, everything that's in this universe. And when God finishes creating human beings, he takes a step back, he looks, he reviews, he sees, and everything is good. It's that word again. When was the last time goodness happened in your life? This week, I had the opportunity once again to meet up here in front, in front of the baptismal font with the family that will be having a baptism next weekend. We sat and we talked about babies and we talked about life and we talked about little people and we talked about the miracles of God. And you know what? I got a chance to hold that baby. I got to tell you, my heart turns into a puddle when I hold babies. There is something so precious and so good about holding a little child. To look into their eyes, to hold their hands and look at their feet, to know the preciousness of that bundle, the goodness of God. Well, if I can stay with Genesis one more step. In the second chapter of Genesis, there is the word good one more time. Only with the word good is added another word. It's the word not good. God says it is not good for human beings to be alone. And so we discover that God is a God of relationship. God is a God who creates another human being. A companion, a soulmate, a partner for life. And we discover in that that God is about relationships and that we need each other. And that we need our soulmates and we need our companions. It's a goodness. It's a goodness that doesn't just happen. It's a goodness that happens because God is at work with it. God has it in hand. And God's hands get dirty creating this second individual. Is it possible that goodness takes work from us as well? To build relationships, to connect with people, to be in relationship with each other? The implied goodness here is that it's good. For human beings to have partners and companions and friends and be connected with each other. So we got to get back to the gospel lesson. We were on a mountaintop, remember that? In the transfiguration story? Jesus goes to that mountaintop with Peter, James, and John. And he's transformed in front of them. And the very first thing that they are able to do is see See something good. See something different. And the thing that they notice is the bright light. The brightness that cuts through the darkness of that mountain. Do you hear an echo from the book of Genesis here? About light breaking through the darkness and being able to see? The second thing about that happens is that Jesus is not alone. Jesus is on that mountain with Peter, James, and John, certainly. But he's also there with two other heavenly beings, with Moses and Elijah. And then this voice, this incredible voice that comes out of the cloud. This third entity that says, this is my son, my beloved, my precious one. Listen to him. Jesus is about connections, about relationships, and about companionship. And it is good. That's when Peter blurts out, good Lord, to be here. We hear the goodness of God. But it's amazing to me, I kind of went ahead of myself here. Got to go back there. It's amazing to me that Peter utters this after they've just climbed 1,500 feet into the mountain top. They've been tuckered out. It says just before that they were almost falling asleep. They were so tired. And yet they see it. They are blinded by this intense light. What an experience to see the razzle and dazzle and the life-changing, the crescendo event of this holy mountain, this moment, about God who's sharing something extraordinary with human beings, with us, for us to share and tell each other. Mountaintops. Mountaintops are experiences that are wonderful. We have them in our lives. 
But mountaintops, the air is kind of thin, isn't it? It's not a place that we can stay for a long time. We end up coming back down. So the next thing that happens in this gospel lesson, they come back down. They come back to New all. They come back home into the routines of life, to the snowdrifts, and to the cold weather, and to the forecasts and the ordinariness and all of the stuff. And they get back there, and that's where this picture comes, to the kid who's sick. Sick with more than just the flu. Sick with more than just a man cold. Sick with something that's life-threatening. His mom and his dad are worried. They've been to ER. The doctors are perplexed. They have no answers. The kid is shrieking with fear and pain and heart. All of those things that a parent's worst memories, worst nightmares are about. This family has anxiety through the roof. They're terrorized by this moment. And Jesus comes walking into town. Jesus. Do you remember the time Jesus went on the boat trip? Jesus was on this boat trip with the disciples. He gets in and he goes to the back and he falls asleep and this huge storm comes along. It starts tossing the boat. It starts to threaten. The storm threatens to capsize the boat. The storm storm threatens to destroy them all. And they wake Jesus up. And Jesus stands up. He faces the wind, he looks into the soul of the storm, and he says, stop it. I tried this last winter. Didn't work. But for Jesus, it did work. Remember what happens? The storm levels out. There is quietness. There is peace. In this story, it happens again. In this story, the storm, the darkness, the chaos is the sick kid. And Jesus comes with a sense of peace, the sense of calm. He rebukes the fever. He says to the unclean spirit, stop it. And the world changes. The world changes, life changes, the whole future changes. You see, this is Transfiguration Sunday. Today we meet God. Today we see the goodness of God. And we recognize in all of those things the wholeness that happens in our lives. We recognize the miraculous surprises that happen in our lives. And we recognize with that that that's God's goodness for us. The gifts of God are rooted in the very good essence, the goodness of God. Here we go again. God is good all the time. time. Amen. Oh, we got to stand and sing Shine, Jesus Shine. Yep.
United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Open us to listen to your word and to do your will. Shine bright so that all the world can see your work in us. Help us to be transfigured by your love and your goodness so that we can change the world around us for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations. Shine, light, uh, shine the light of truth into the world's relationships hindered by mistrust or misunderstanding. Bring freedom and stability to all nations. Shelter those who have been displaced by war, famine, or natural disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for those who struggle with shame or guilt. Bring clarity to those whose judgment is clouded by fear. Comfort those who grieve, heal the sick. We pray especially for Sharon Halkey, Lloyd Juleen, Sandy Wagner, Alex Fenske, Darla Swanson and Glenn Swanson, Russ Brown, Ken Jones, Carl Enk, Gene Haynes, Tom Postel, Roger Juleen, Mark Anderson, Jess Giesecke, Karen Peterson, Joyce Joby, Alex Drexler, uh, Jim Schneider, Adele Fisher. We also pray for those that we lift up now in the silence of our hearts or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we give back to God what was first given to us. People of God, people of life, we gather for a meal that has been shared in countless, way, in countless places and in countless ways. For this meal, Jesus gathered with friends around a table, where he was surrounded by a ragged collection of people, some insiders, but also outsiders, betrayers, lonely ones, lost ones, working people, and opportunists. At this meal, Jesus promised that every time it was celebrated, he would be there. Today, with this meal, we affirm that all belong at this table. Let there be peace among us as we eat this bread and drink this wine. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends, saying, Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup is poured out for you and for all people. It is the gift of love, hope, and forgiveness. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. So once a year we have this privilege, this joy of welcoming and inviting our council, our teams, our committees for 2019 in this case to come and to be installed as a part of our congregation's um, mission and outreach groups. So this morning I'd like to invite all of you who will be on the 2019 teams, committees, councils, all of those pieces to come on up so that we can install you. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of our saviors for leadership in this congregation. This ministry is both a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes you have special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your role and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this people, and to our ministry in the world. Do you acknowledge yourself to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, you answer, I do. I, do. I now invite you and this congregation to proclaim your faith. Let's all stand for this. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now I'm going to ask you to pray with me for this council, for these teams, for these committees that we have for 2019. And as we do, I would invite you to raise your right hand as, as we call God's blessings on the year ahead. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these, your servants. Grant them joy in giving themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Guide them in their work reward their witness with a vision that through them your purposes are accomplished here in this place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so a question for you as a congregation. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage these individuals in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? Let's applaud and affirm. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, if you would just hang with me for a minute until we get to the end of the service, I would appreciate if you would just stand and be a receiving line at the end so that, that we can say thank you personally to them, okay? Perfect. You got that? Yeah. All right. Well, congregation, you can be seated. I guess you guys have to keep standing. <laughs> Um, we've got plenty of announcements, and we can just start. Uh, Sherry, do you want to talk about the uh, gathering? Good morning. On behalf of the adult ministry team, we would like to invite the women of our saviors to attend the annual KJLY Christian Radio Women's Conference. 
It is an all-day event being held on April 6th, which is a Saturday, at Hosanna Lutheran Church in Mankato. The featured speaker is nationally recognized speaker and author Liz Curtis Higgs. Some of you may be familiar with one of her books, The Bad Girls of the Bible. The conference is a popular event that draws women from southern Minnesota and typically sells out. As of this past Friday, 450 women had registered so far, and uh, the max is 700. Women who have previously attended the conference report that it is a wonderful way for women to connect and be fed spiritually. If you are interested in attending or would like more information, there is a table set up in back of church with flyers. There will also be a sign-up sheet on the table if you would be interested in carpooling from the church parking lot. So stop back after church for more information. Wonderful. Yeah, I guess we'll just keep on rolling. Here's Patty. <laughs> Good morning. As your newly installed president of the congregation, um, at the council meeting a week and a half ago, um, we wanted to make sure that we stay in communication with the congregation and we will continue doing the temple talks after the council meeting. So we have several things that we want you to be aware of. First is we have many open positions. This is not what it takes to make this congregation work. We need more people. And so we will be contacting people in the next several weeks trying to fill in some of those open positions. Please consider saying yes if you are asked. Um, just a brief a piece about the electronic giving. We would encourage people to consider doing the automatic withdrawal from their checking or savings account for offering. We know that with weather and vacations in the summer, it's not always easy to get to church, but the congregational needs continue whether people are in the pulpits or not. And so we'd like to ask you to think about that. We will have electronic giving forms at the table in the, in the social hall. Another piece is our building fund. Many of us came to this congregation after the expansion of this building and maybe aren't thinking about the fact that we still have a loan that we need to make payments on. So if you have not thought about that, we would ask that you consider making a donation to the building fund. Maybe you can't do an every month, but if you could do something sometime, that would be welcome. Pastor Jean, I don't mean to steal your thunder here. The mission assessment process is continuing. There going to be doing some, a few more things, and then there will be some reports back to the congregation. Those will be coming up probably after Easter, and they will be a really exciting time for us to hear about the things that everybody's had to say. So look for those um, announcements. They will be a cause for celebration. For those people who are Thrivent members, Thrivent Choice is still available for 2018. You have until the end of the month to make those donations. If you don't know how to do that, you can call your agent. There is um, an option online if you'd prefer to do that. Our Saviors is a recognized recipient, so if you'd like to consider that, we'd welcome that also. Easter lilies. It doesn't seem like it, but Easter is coming fairly soon. Easter lilies are ordered every year, and we have the most beautiful floral offering on Easter. But like everything else, that takes some funds. And in the past, we haven't necessarily had donations to cover all of those. So if you're thinking about buying an Easter lily, if you'd let Shannon know that fairly soon, she'd really like to know, I think. <laughs> and then the last piece is um, something that we're going to try and see if this works. We know that you want to talk to the council. We know you have questions. You'd like to tell us what you think is working well, what you think we could do better. So on Sunday mornings, we're going to have a table out at the coffee hour. The council is in. Think Lucy in the, in the Peanuts cartoons. So look for the uh, sign that says council is in. Come and talk to us. Questions, comments, concerns. We'd be happy to talk to you then. Thank you. Well, wonderful. Um, a <clears throat> couple other things to lift out. There's that wings dinner that's coming up. There's more information in your grab and, <clears throat> excuse me, 
more information in your grab-and-go. Lent is coming up. Yeah, Easter's coming, but Lent starts this week, this Wednesday. Uh, we have the schedule of the services in there. We will be having meals beforehand, not for Ash Wednesday. We won't have a meal this week, but the other Wednesdays in Lent, we will be having meals led by our teams. Um, and talking about Lent, how many of you know absolutely everything about Lent? Yes? Shannon, come on. Okay, I, I can believe Shannon knows everything about Lent. <clears throat> I went to seminary, I took multiple classes on the church year, and I am still learning a ton about what Lent is, what it has been, and what it could be. Um, there's really cool stuff. So actually today in the upper room we'll be talking about what Lent is, uh, what we want to see out of Lent, and the cool opportunities that Lent affords us. So uh, for all of you who didn't raise your hand, I expect you to be in the upper room, okay? Uh, and if you're not in the upper room, I expect you to be back in the choir room because the MAP team is doing their final at-large uh, focus group. So if you haven't had a chance to be a part of one of those focus groups, this is your opportunity. It'll start right after the service back in the choir room. And I guess if you're not back there, come on out, grab a cup of coffee, talk to the people around you, join in some fellowship and get to meet some wonderful people. Um, I think for other announcements, we still have uh, some volunteer slots up on the bulletin board out there, so please take a look at where you can serve for that. Oh, for Ash Wednesday, we even have some stuff. So please, uh, please take a look at that for Ash Wednesday, because that would really help to have some people helping us lead. You know, I'm not really great at it up here. <laughs> so now, I believe with all that said, I invite you to stand to receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our ascending hymn, This Little Light of Mine. Go forth and transform the world, knowing you are saved by God's grace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.